Welcome to Bitter Reality Brewing. This is part two of Carried a Rye. Basically, it's our Irish red rye with toasted caraway seeds. So, sitting right here, we're gonna move it to the keg, but before we move it to the keg, I got a couple things, including something we're gonna to do to the keg. One, don't forget like, subscribe, keep sharing. This is part two. If you've seen part one, great. If you haven't, no spoilers. Go back, see part one. We're gonna take also a poll. We're gonna do this in a lot of the videos now. If you like beer, love beer, anything relative to beer, hit the red button, make sure it goes gray. You don't wanna see that thing anymore. Show me that you love it. Definitely love beer. Hit that red button. Thank you. Okay. I know a lot of you have probably seen this buoy or buoy floating thing, which is a big old ball. It floats around inside your keg so that you can actually pull from the top of the keg. Well, that's actually not what we're installing tonight. But pretty close. There it is. It's got a little floating buoy. So I picked up one pretty cheap off eBay. There's another brand out there that's insanely expensive and I'm sorry, but insanely expensive. I spent just a tiny bit more and I decided I wanted to try this. You can see that? But basically, look at the instructions here. If you've seen Spundit 2.0, Spundit 2.0 is really high quality. I mean, just really, really nice spunding valve. This is floated or flotted. However you want to say it. I don't know how you pronounce an O with an arrow over the top, but it's essentially their design on it. It even comes with a nice little air piece to kind of reduce that extra and give you a little extra head space. But we're going to install this floated device with wherever the heck I put it. I've been washing all these pieces, this piece, and it'll connect to it. And what it does is essentially when you start pulling your beer, it pulls from the top by floating and floating until it gets towards the bottom. And then it doesn't pull the very bottom of it, but it gets pretty close. That way you're not losing beer, but at the same time, you're also not drinking the, the yeast right up front from the bottom when you get that, you know, that first, yeah. Um, the nice thing is though, is you're starting from the top, which is gonna be the clearest as everything is falling out of suspension. I have right over here, one teaspoon of gelatin dissolved in one cup of spring water. I really loved it too. Brulosophy recently did that and I was already moving to one teaspoon and he did a comparison, you know, using, I want to say it was two teaspoons versus a half a teaspoon and it showed better clarity. It just looked better and there wasn't any noticeable difference in taste. So I'm gonna stick to my one teaspoon. That's enough for me. So let me set this back into the hot water and we're gonna do the transfer. But before we do the transfer, like I said, I need to change the tip here and I'm gonna figure out, let you see what we're doing here. So first of all, I need to make sure I know which side is out. There it is. I'm gonna pull this out. And there's the dip tube, removed. I'm gonna put this in here. That's it. And then we're gonna take this nice little hose. Well, I'm gonna toss it in there. My hands have been in very hot water, but just in case, Put a little star sand on them just to make sure I don't carry any kind of issues with me, shall we say. The directions are pretty decent, but you know, there wasn't a lot of graphics or pictures saying do this step, then this step, which is kind of going down a little list. Okay. The one thing it did say, once you put the ball lock piece back on, just give it about a half to a three quarter turn. Don't over tighten it because it can smush the rubber down and actually basically block the flow. So that's it. I mean, there is really nothing special. Is... And I didn't know this, but this part has a little seal and you can pull it and you can slide this around and clean it really good. So yes, you can take it and clean it really, really well. That was a concern of mine because I could not tell that from the pictures that I was looking at when I purchased it. Oh, you know what we forgot? We forgot the gelatin. I got, like I said, one cup. When you're doing gelatin too, if you don't already know, a lot of people do, zap your half cup, one cup, whatever you're doing, whether it's a half a teaspoon, full teaspoon, zap it for about 15 seconds in the microwave and then 10 second increments and keep stirring. Each time you take it out, stir, stir, don't leave the spoon in. I actually use the wooden sticks that I throw away afterwards, but it should be relatively clear. It's gonna be a little foggy, but it should be relatively clear. There shouldn't be anything floating around and you don't wanna boil it. Don't, don't boil it. Might get a nice, look like a jellyfish floating around inside your beer. 
That would not be good. Hey, I don't know what I just touched on that, but uh, looks really good. Disconnect back on. And like I said, it says the hand tighten. It's pretty freaking tight. I know I'm not Hercules or anything. I'm about a half a turn. Three quarters. I know I'm going to over tighten it, but hopefully not. That's it. Okay, I'm going to skip a little bit because I've got to clear this off so I can get the CO2 out and purge it, and we'll do the transfer. So most of you have seen this rodeo before, you know how this is going to go. We're just dumping water, hot water from here into here by pulling liquid or beer out of the carboy. And yes, I got a new microphone, a couple of new microphones, and hopefully they're doing much, much better. And we'll just toss that out of the way. My wife designed this or worked with a designer, shall we say, to design it. It's looking a lot clearer today when it was nice and bright in the house, but it's all good. I can get a little bubble if I want here and there, but we'll go over what it's sitting at when we go to test it out. Here we go. Here. I'll do something to adjust the heights. It's part of my problem here. And there goes the beer. Okay, let's get it back. I need to like put it, you know, right here. Take this, pop it off. Make a little mess. We always do. Pop it on. Move this so we can. Like I said, I need to lift it up somehow. And, uh, got it. Bowl to the rescue. Sorry for the banging. But there we go. Okay, let's rock and roll. didn't stop us so we're good we got five gallons a little extra beer here didn't get enough to really carbonate it and do a good job but See how that comes out carbonated. Got a little hint of rye bread at the very end because of the caraway seeds. That's nice. I definitely didn't want it in my face, but it's very nice. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, cold crash this bad boy, clean up the mess that I made. Yeah, clean up the mess. It's pretty typical for me. We'll cold crash it, carbonate it, and see how it is. Okay, I know you just saw us do the transfer, but it's been almost a week. Actually, it's been about five, six days, but time to taste the Irish red rye or toasted caraway seeds. I had a tiny sip because it was foaming up and everything. I kind of forgot to turn my teaser back on yesterday <laughs> and I just turned it back on. So I shut it off. You can kind of hear the noise and I've been replacing my shanks or shorter shanks just because the original ones I bought when I built the keyser were a little too long and kind of in my way. So we're going to kick the flow control on a little here for the inner tap. See if we can't reduce some of the foam because it is definitely on the over carbonated side. It's going, it's not too bad. Oh yeah, there we go. And I don't know if you can see, I'm not sure if this is gonna help. Get it out. 
from behind the muffin top label. Really, really, really clear. I mean, super clear. I don't see anything floating in it. Yeah, that is like amazing. Now, of course, we used the Clarity from White Labs. We also used a full teaspoon of gelatin, which I've been using for a little while before Brewlosophy started talking about doing a full two teaspoons even. Did a little test, which made kind of reconfirmed or reaffirmed what I was already doing. And then on top of that, we put the floating, where we call the floated system from the same people who use the Spundit 2.0. So we had a lot of things going for us for clear beer. We're not pulling from the bottom. We had the gelatin and on top of that, we had pretty clear wart. So we had an original gravity of 1.055, which came in at 80% of brew house efficiency, which I nailed. That's exactly what I was looking for. Final gravity, according to Beersmith at the Irish East from White Lab should have been 1.013. We almost always beat that. Yeah, I went a little two points down, 1.011, which means we finished at 5.8 instead of 5.6, and I'm good with that. So, I haven't had a beer in over three, almost four days. I've been trying to lose a little bit from that Jamaica trip. And um, yeah, my senses are keen. There's no previous beer before this one. It's rare that I nail things all the way through. And I mean, it may taste great, but it may not always be exactly what I want. There's definitely quite a few that I've gotten either really close or I overshot and it came out amazing or whatever. And flavor is king, so I could care less if I missed something else, but we nailed the brew house efficiency and I nailed the flavors. I've got a lot of rye going on, which is great. It's not like totally crazy. Well, at least not for me, because I like a lot of rye. And the caraway seeds is perfect. It gives me a subtle hint of like a rye bread at the very end, very subtle, very smooth. So it's not like a quick little taste or an after, it's just this little lingering taste comes and goes. Dude, I don't know if I'll be drinking this or the Irish extra stout when I'm making the corned beef and cabbage, but I'm telling you right now, I'm gonna have this with a nice Reuben. And I'm debating between making it, my, probably make it myself because I've got all kinds of great sauerkrauts in the bottom drawer. Some with pepper, some without, some with garlic. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. But amazing. Irish red rye, toasted caraway seeds. Definitely something I'd brew again in a heartbeat. It was, it's just amazing. It came out awesome. It's a bad time for a diet. I'm telling you that right now. But my 25 year old will be over here in a heartbeat once he finds out about this and um, filling up his keg. So that'll be one less gallon I have. But yeah, if you're in Jacksonville, Florida, let me know. You'll definitely appreciate it. It's awesome. Thank you again for joining us here at Bitter Reality Brewing. Subscriptions have been through the roof. Definitely appreciate it. Huge, huge, definitely. Don't forget, like, subscribe. And if you love beer, show it. Nail the like button, nail the subscribe. Thank you again very, very much. Much appreciate it.